All right. Thank you for that confirmation, Colleen. It's good to see you again. Now that I've met you in person, met a lot of you in person last week at No Code Conference. Welcome back. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get back to streaming here. Uh, no Code Conference was quite exciting. Got a bunch of ideas uh, for live streams. So yeah, really excited uh, to bring you more of these. So today we're going to be... Um, Oops, this is the wrong, wrong live stream. Oh no, I just didn't change the name here. So this is Parabola and Webflow. Okay, I'll do that later. All right, sorry about that. It's been a big week. Just got back from San Francisco. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to show you how to pull in Google Analytics data into uh, your Webflow CMS. And how we're gonna do that is with uh, Parabola. So every time I think of Parabola, I always worry that I'm gonna say Parabola. So if that happens, I, I apologize. Uh, I know how that word is said, and, and I, I just don't say it that often anymore. And so every time I get really worried, I'm gonna mix that up. Um, cool. So yeah, say hi in the chat. Uh, you know. The, the value of coming here live is that you can ask me questions and, and see me sweat uh, in, in real time. And I think we're gonna do quite a bit of that today because I'm not as familiar with um, Parabola as, as, as I am with other tools. So it's the first time I'm kind of doing this live with them, but yeah, really excited to, to get this started. So what we're gonna do essentially today is, you know, seems very simple, I have my CMS collection on my website. And what I'd love is to import a field that is page views. So essentially this is, you know, coming from Google Analytics. Um, and that information is here, right? So just like context setting, I don't have a high traffic website. Uh, I have a very janky website. Uh, and essentially people who take my class on Airtable uh, can access uh, some templates and things like that. It's not high traffic, but you know, it'll serve uh, um, the purpose of what we need today. So essentially what I wanna do is take this piece of data right here, which is my editorial calendar. And then if I go into Essential Guide to Airtable, which is my CMS collection, uh, which is gonna find editorial calendar, I wanna add a field that is page views here. And I want to, um, put that data in and I want to automatically run uh, for each one of my CMS items. Uh, I want to pull in those page views from Google Analytics every day at midnight and looking back the last 30 days, last seven days. And the value of that is I can create a, a page where um, I have my posts, my, you know, my blog posts in, in your case, uh, ranked by popularity. So we're going to do that right here. So right now they're just ranked by lesson number. Uh, and you can see that right over here on the right. If I go up one level, they are sort order by lesson number and we want to update it to popularity. So not a high traffic website, very, very low traffic website, but you know it'll be the same thing if you do have a high traffic website. So I have already built this. So this is essentially um, the tool we're going to use to pass data from Google Analytics into uh, our Webflow CMS. So just kind of uh, going here. So we did the overview of the Webflow CMS. And there's essentially three steps that we're going to go through. We're going to import the data from Google Analytics right here. And then we're going to import the data from Webflow. And then we're going to do these operations to be able to merge these two data sets together and then we're gonna export it back into the Webflow CMS. So all in all, it's relatively simple. And, and like all things, it's really simple once you're done. And when you're doing it, it's not that simple. Um, so we're gonna go step by step to do this. So um, let me know if you have any questions. So Parabola is just gonna be our tool that pings uh, the Google Analytics API, gets the data, pings the Webflow API, gets the data. And then we're going to merge those two data sets together and then export it back into Webflow CMS. Um, so I see that Parabola has joined uh, the chat, which is cool, but also extremely intimidating. Um, 
So it's, it's good to have that safety net that you're here, but it's also terrifying to know that you're probably going to be like mm, doing it all wrong. Um, so, so let's see how this goes. Um, but we're going to start from scratch because it would just kind of be too easy to click through and then you wouldn't have the joy of seeing me sweat. So uh, looking at a roadmap here. So first step, import Google Analytics data uh, into Parabola. Um, hey, Justin. Um, so, and then we're going to do Webflow CMS as well. So luckily there's a Google Analytics little module right here. And that way it's much easier. We don't actually have to, um, oh, I should have authorized this before. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, we don't actually have to in, you know, uh, um, touch the Google Analytics API. The work has already been done. There we go. So it's going to pull in my accounts. I am amazing at naming things, as you can see. This is not the right website name. And this, I have two websites here, and none of them are the right name. Um, so this is just clicking through. Uh, so we want, I think it's page tracking. And then depending on the type of website you have, you can see different things. Here, like, you know, if you're an e-commerce website and you have your sales in Google Analytics, you can potentially pull in your sales and then tie them back to the Webflow CMS. So that way you can have, hey, most popular over the last 15 days, or you can even go by inventory. Like the ideas are many. Um, I don't have an e-commerce website. If you have one and you want to do this tutorial, I'm happy to, to take you through it. So we're just going to go with page views and then dimensions. I don't think we need any, I don't think so. And then we're gonna to restrict to say 30 days ago. Uh, D is lowercase, there we go, show updated results. And this is gonna go and directly fetch the data. Obviously we got an error, not all sets are filled out. Okay, none, there we go. Hmm, what is not filled out here? Oh, right, right. So my page views is my uh, uh, number of page views. I also need uh, a key. And what I want is page path. Uh, page path, right? Okay. Oh, two date is today. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, great. <laughs> we got it. So essentially, this gives us my page path and the number of page views. Now, what we're going to do from here is use this page path and link it to my Webflow CMS slug, right? So if we look at this editorial calendar page, so that's, it's going to be, you know, slash essential guide to Airtable slash editorial calendar. And then I can find the reference in Parabola uh, with my editorial calendar, right? So I have it right here. So essential guide to Airtable slash editorial calendar. So when I pull in my data from Webflow, um, I'm going to match it to um, this key right here. So the next couple of steps are actually going to be cleaning up this information so we can merge those two tables together. Makes sense. Too fast, too slow, uh, too many errors, not enough errors. Uh, let me know. Um, yeah, cool. So that is pulling in import GA data from Parabola. Let me get a little better. There we go. Next is going to be pulling in Webflow data. Right. All right. So what we want to do here is use uh, Webflow's API to pull in every single item in our CMS. Oh, actually, one thing we, we, we need to do before is, actually, this was supposed to be step one, was add page views. Oh, damn it. We need to add page views right here. Page views, number, page views. And this is what we're actually going to merge into. Um, so save that. Yeah, live debugging is great. It's great for you to watch. It's terrible for me. It's absolutely terrifying, I have to be honest. Every time something doesn't work, it's like it gets 10 degrees hotter in here. 
So, um, okay, we have our, our page views. I'm actually gonna publish that change. And then, okay, so, okay, so one thing that you need to know or that I learned the hard way is that um, the, the out of the box integration between Webflow and um, um, Parabola is that the default API call is just for sites, right? So if I, if I, let me just pull in my, my token here, which I'm going to hide from you guys. Oop. Look at that. There we go. And then I, I run that call. It's just going to give me a list of sites um, that I have in my website, right? So it's just telling me, hey, um, this is just at the high level of your website, what it is, your API call. But if we go into the API reference, um, what we want to go get are items. So we want to get all items for a collection. Now, you don't need to be like an API wizard or anything to understand this stuff. What you essentially need to know that, um, let me just bring this back, sorry. What you essentially need to know is that this is the URL. So it's a get call. And then this is your request. So you need to get, get the collection ID that you want. So we want to go get collections. So we want to first list collections. So we need a site ID. So it's kind of like, you know, backwards recursion. So what we're going to go do is, oh, we have a site ID right here. So if I'm not mistaken, this is my site ID. So I'm going to do this call, which is slash site slash site ID. So I'm just copy pasting and then I'm going to go collections. It's going to list out all the collections in Webflow. Boom. You know, it's great when I say it's going to do that and then it does. That's a really good feeling. Um, and then we want to, we want a specific collection, right? So we go to items, get all collections. So I need collections, a collection ID slash items. So which one do we want? Mine is called essential guide to air tables. Um, wasn't the best at naming stuff then and, and now. So this is my ID. So we want to do collections right here and then we're going to copy paste that ID and then we're going to go items. So we're going to show the update result. Great. So this gives us this right here, All right? So if I hover over, it gives me like this really long, whoop, really long, what we'll call it a JSON, right? So, um, we want to split this into rows. So how, how the response works is that it returns this blob, this piece of information. But what we want is we want item by item, right? So this is, would be item one. Unfortunately, this example only has one item. We want to uh, add a top level key. So what this is going to do is going to take the count, the limit, the offset, and then, you know, drag those down, but it's also going to look into this huge blob and then split apart each row according to whatever key we set. So I think this makes a lot more sense if I just set a key. My mouse is really being difficult. Items, there we go, show updated results. And there we have our table. So what it's done is that it's, it said, okay, we need one row for each item and each item actually corresponds to a Webflow CMS item, right? So. If we look at this example, I've got uh, the name is managing a music podcast. The class length is 1031. If I go here and I go into my CMS, then managing a music podcast, it's somewhere. There we go. It's right here. You have all that information, table length, podcast, air table. So we've just kind of taken all of the information from Webflow CMS or this particular Webflow CMS and made it into a table. Um, does that make sense? So we've kind of like done the work of the API call, but put it into a table, which is kind of a much more convenient and uh, usable format than just like a blob 
of information. So I, I you know, I have no idea if this is too fast, too slow. Um, but yeah, let me know. I'm sure the Parabola team thinks this is just the right speed, but um, let me know. So there we go. Okay, so what we wanna get to is merging the data we have. We essentially wanna take this field, the page views, right? And stick it to the end of this table. Right, so we just want to add it there. What we need to find is two columns or one column in our web flow table, one column in our um, Google Analytics table that are similar enough that we can uh, merge them together. So here, actually, Colleen, what like I'm Oh, I can't, oh, I was gonna do an API call in the browser to show you what the result would look like if we're not using Parabola, um, but I won't do that because then I have to do a few changes. But okay, back to merging those two things together. So I have this column right here, which is page path, right? So this is, if I think about it, essential guide to Airtable competing our first base is very close to my slug. So if I go here and I find completing, oh, I can't do a control F, or can I? Can't. No, I can't, it's fine. Um, it's very close to my slug right here. So actually slug is what's after um, the template, the CMS name slash and then slug. So it's very close to my page path. So I'm actually gonna do a few edits on this field right here so that it, it matches the one I have in Google Analytics. So we're gonna remove everything that is not, that doesn't start with essential guide to Airtable and then we're gonna remove that part of the URL. So I'm, all I'm gonna be left with is that slug. I keep pointing to my computer, forgetting that you don't see my computer. So uh, I wanna remove that. I just wanna keep the end of that. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna filter, uh, filter rows. So hopefully Colleen with Parabola, you'll never need to work with APIs. You'll just work with Parabola. Um, so we want to filter out anything that does not contain, and then we're just gonna keep this little bad boy right here. Value, show update results. Oh, sorry, we wanna keep contains, okay. Nope, sorry, the other way around. So now we only have uh, our CMS items or things that are from that uh, CMS item. And you you know, if you have an e-commerce website, this might be categories, this might be, you might have a flow where you pull in your data and then do four different, five uh, different flows, one for each of your categories, just to find which one in that category is the most popular. So we're just doing one uh, CMS, um, You'd only one CMS because I don't have any others that people actually visit. And this one is barely visited, so. <laughs> and then what we want to do is also, we wanna match the, the slug exactly. So we wanna remove the essential guide to Airtable and just keep that completing our first base. So next is uh, find and replace. Like that. And so just like the rows just tell you, hey, take the data from here and then import it as an input into this. So those are you kind of familiar with Zapier, it's kind of a similar concept. Um, so we want to remove essential guide to our table slash and replace with nothing. So you gotta click that blue. That took me a while to figure out. And there we have our key. Right, so now this matches our slug exactly. So if I come here, you know, managing a music podcast is gonna match exactly uh, the one I have here. So we're, uh, I don't know if anyone ever visited that one. I don't think so. It's quite far in the class. <laughs> so we now have a key in uh, here that we can match to the slug field here. So these match exactly. Does that does that make sense? 
I'm not sure if that makes sense. If you know. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to join those two tables together. So this takes two inputs, takes table one, table two, relatively intuitive. Um, so we're going to do a left join. What that means is that we're going to have our table on the left, which is the web flow data. And we're just going to try to find matches based on our key uh, from our Google Analytics data. You have a few options. I'm not going to get into them. Um, but have some fun with it. So what we want to match is slug on the left. And then it's going to match find uh, path. Does, yeah, that makes sense. Results. And then we have page views, right? So 12 for, which one is this? This is roll up and count field types. So just kind of going back here, if we go roll up and count field types. Oh, this is in 30 days, so don't worry about it. Um, roll up and field types. We've matched the slug exactly. And then we've merged that data together. So those who have empty means no one's ever visited that web that page, which is kind of sad. Um, cool. Okay. So we are almost there. Uh, we're going to sort it. Sort the table. Not that you have to sort it. I just, it just for me, it's kind of cool to know which ones are the most popular. So we're going to go descending, show update results. I'm just going to come here and, and then we have based on the popularity of each one of our posts. And then, you know, last step. Oh, this went way, f well, it feels like it went way faster than I thought it would, but this is going to be probably the hardest part. So I shouldn't speak too fast. Um, what we're going to do is push the data back into Webflow. Now, let me make sure that I actually have, uh, no, it should be fine. Okay, I have page views, but when I imported it, did I have page views? I didn't have page views. Okay, I think what I need to do here is put a one. So at least fill one of the values with something. It doesn't have to be one, it could be zero. So let's just put zero here. That way, not all of the fields are empty. Let's publish that. And let's just re-import. Take a minute here. Uh, we're just going to re-import this right here. And I'm going to refresh. And I just want to make sure that page views is somewhere here. Okay, page views right there. There's zero. Uh, and it's page views too because I used to have a field that was page views, you know, that I was testing with. So the API kind of remembers that and created page views too. Cool. Okay. So let's rerun this. Uh, do I have page views here or do I need to rerun it? No. Okay. It, it did the rest of the flow. That makes sense. So it should be here as well. Okay, great. So uh, this is not an import that we want. We want to export. So what this does is you import a table and then for each row, it's going to do an API export. It's going to do an API call. You define what kind of call you want to make for each row in your table. So what we want to do just, you know, uh, in theory, oof, my, my mouse is acting up here is Oop, give me a sec. There we go. We want to take GA page views and fill p page views, essentially. Uh, so for each row, take data in p GA page views and put it into page views. So how do we do that? So 
you have two different things you can do. You can do an update collection item, or you can do a patch live collection item. I'm gonna avoid you the work of figuring out the difference between those two things. Update live collection item means you specify each um, field. So let's say you wanna change all the fields or you wanna re-specify all the fields. Uh, you do an update live collection. If not, you do a patch live collection item. So it's a patch, the type, call type is patch. And then you have collections, collection ID slash items slash item ID. We're gonna pull the item ID from um, the table itself. So each row is a different item ID. Collection ID we already have from our um, from the previous steps. And then we just need to specify, you know, we have a few live, whether it's a live item or not. And then we need to specify the field that we want changed. So that we're gonna do in the body itself. So here's an example. Uh, this is the body of the call we need to make. So for those who are maybe a little less familiar with um, APIs and how they work, and, and I'm one of them, to be honest, I haven't worked with this that much. Um, you know, feel free to reach out to the Parabola team once you get there, but we're gonna have to specify this body right here. So we're gonna have to say fields and which fields we're changing. So let's kind of walk through how we would do that in Parabola itself. So first thing, it's a patch call. Um, and the endpoint, so let's just copy paste the endpoint. So I'm just gonna run it. it, usually it gives me the inputs. It did not give me the inputs. Okay, this is kind of frustrating because I need to open up the inputs somewhere else. Okay, let me, let me just do this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna discard the changes. I'm gonna come here. I'm just gonna copy paste a few things. That way I don't, so I can already see the kind of parabola team thinking about user experience here. So I just need a few items from previous. So I need my, my token and I need my CMS ID, which is CID right here. So I'm just copy pasting those. That way I can do that all in one call. Yeah. And then ID right here is what we're gonna put as a variable in our call. Okay. So first things first, patch. The endpoint is api.webflow.com. slash collections, slash collection ID right here, which I've just copy pasted like that. And then item ID is gonna come from, why isn't it showing me my import tables? Item ID should be ID like that. And the body, let's just send test. Okay. Oh, I haven't connected my table. That makes sense. Well, that explains it. Okay, cool. Um, so now that I have my table, I can actually see it. Makes a lot of sense. So this is my, all right, I need to have an authentication. Copy paste that. Everyone close their eyes. There you go. So that makes sense. And then I need a body. So this is gonna be our challenge right here. So let's just run it without a body. Okay. So this all makes sense. Let me know if this makes sense to you where, where I'm just trying to set the blocks right um, so that we can actually send the right body. So one thing to know when you're doing an export is that it's kind of hard to test in Parabola because it won't do a live call. So unless there's an error in what you're doing, um, it's not actually gonna help you out. So you gotta be a little bit digital, diligent with what you're doing. Right, you need to accept version. So I'm just copying the different parameters. So right here, add custom header. 
and then so we want accept version like that add another one which is now if you ask me how I know this it's because I messed around with it quite a bit um, content type content type application JSON okay all right so so far we're quite set up so let me just double check this I've got collections collections my collection ID now if you want to be fancy you can also just pass in the collection ID variable right here so let's say you are aggregating data from four or five different um, CMSs. Uh, you can always pass in the ID itself right here. And then items. And then, yeah, items right here. And then we're going to pass underscore ID, which is the ID of that field. And then the body itself. So this is a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to copy paste this. Okay. So what we're saying here is that this is going to pass into the calls, the body and is going to tell Webflow which items do you want to update, right? Makes sense. So fields, the field we want to update is called page views two. page views two. So this is the name of the column here and the data we want to put in it. So the data, so updated exciting blog post title is GA page views. So GA, whoop, I'm going to copy paste that and we're going to put it in curly brackets like that. And I'm pretty sure we don't want a comma here. I think that's a mistake. So if there's anyone from Webflow, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure there shouldn't be one here. Okay. So I think with that, we can run it, see if there's an error. Doesn't seem to be an error. So one thing to note is that it's not running live. It'll only run live when uh, we set it to publish. So before I do that, kind of let me know if you have any questions so far. I um, feel like I'm going a little fast, um, but let me know. So this kind of completes our flow. I'm going to publish it. And then we're going we're gonna to run it. So run now. Okay, it's telling me what's going on. Doing the API export. Fingers crossed. Okay, seems to be working. Um, why page view for page title and not a value for the actual page title? So, um, so you're mixing up two things. So we're passing um, when we're when when you say how does it? So the question you're asking is how does it find um, the the page that it needs to update the field, right? And we pass that in right here. So what Webflow does is that it says, okay, I need to go to the collection that is Essential Guide to Airtables. I need to then go to this ID, right, which I'm passing through. So this is the, uh, the ID right here, right here. And then I need to go find a field, which is page views two, and then I need to update it with GA page views with this right here. So that ran, fingers crossed, if I refresh, uh, oops, yeah, doesn't matter. I'm actually a little stressed out. Maybe, maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't. You never know with these things. Um, so stage changes. So that's good. And then managing a music podcast has no page views. That one. So editorial calendar was the popular one, right? Editorial calendar. Where is it? Right here. Page views twenty six. All right. We did it. So then uh, we can instead order this by, whoops, 
uh, settings. Instead of this, let's order it by page views. Uh, page views, page views, save. Oops, now I think it's, uh, we wanna do the other one, largest to smallest, save. And there you go. You can even add it as a variable. Um, does that, see, I always do this. I always start with, you know, best intentions and following my, uh, my roadmap and then I get excited and then I, and I forget about it. So I think, when, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what we wanted to do. So then you would, yeah, last thing you can do is you can set this on a schedule. So you can say, hey, you know, run this every day, run this at midnight, and your blog posts will be automatically uh, updated according to page views. So yeah, pretty cool. I think so. I think if you're here, you think it's pretty cool too. I think we're a niche subset of people who think this is cool. Um, but I'm excited that you're all here. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take a minute. If you have any questions, uh, happy to answer. If not, I'm gonna fare you uh, a good evening. So yeah, let me know. Yeah, Max, happy you found it cool. Thanks, Tom, for joining. Thanks, Parabola, for cheerleading me using your own tool. That's cool, too. So no questions. Yeah, it's cool. There's definitely you know a bunch of things I want to explore more. So if you have ideas, let me know. Uh, there's a little form in the, the notes around... Um, ideas for live streams. So if you have things you'd like to connect on Parabola, let me know. Uh, next week, if you're still here, uh, next week we're gonna do updating your whole website from Airtable. So that means all of your website, all of your landing pages are gonna be in Airtable and uh, um, you're gonna edit anything in Airtable, push, go to Parabola, push deploy, and it's gonna deploy directly um, your Webflow website. So I think that's gonna be next week for everyone who's kind of geeky and wants to um, manage their websites. You know, imagine you have hundreds of landing pages. Um, you can manage them all for Airtable. Hey, Andrew. Um, I think the biggest thing has been, my biggest issue in starting was figuring out this key, top level key and how that works. So, um, you know, for the longest of time, I would have that blob and I would not know that I have a top level key. So, so that, was, that, that was the biggest thing. And also the default for Webflow being um, the sites API call. Um, I'm not sure, I know you'll have to put a default, but I'm not sure that that is the, the most obvious default. Like it took me a while to figure out that I gotta go into the collection and then go into the site. Um, so I don't know if it, it, it should have four options or if it should be a drop down, I don't know. But those were the two biggest challenges. Once I got that, um, it was, you know, relatively simple to do. Any other questions here? I'm just going to go into. Um, nope. Yeah, cool. So. Any last questions before I go or thoughts? Um, yeah, no worries, Andrew. Cool, all right, well, hope to see you next week. Uh, you know, subscribe to my uh, uh, newsletter. Oh, how would I 10X this? Tom, do you mean like, how would I make this 10X bigger? What, what do you mean by that? That awkward moment where I'm waiting for someone to type a question. That's fine. No one actually watches these things. <laughs> yeah, I think I think um, I think there's a lot to do around trending. Let's say you want to run like something every hour to see if something is 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 taking off. If you have multiple categories in your e-commerce website and you wanna do what is the most popular within that group, 
other ideas that I just don't have the infrastructure to do, or just like in terms of, of use case, would be maybe if something hits a certain threshold of popularity, you want to send an email. Um, there's just that like any type of combination around something that needs uh, something to happen based on traction or whatever data from Google Analytics or whatever other source. It could be event inventory is at zero or like something is trending and inventory is going down. Um, you could you can set alerts. Uh, you can think of like tracking as well. So let's say something is really popular, but you're having trouble shipping it. All of that can kind of be at a micro scale, like at a very quick, you can do every five minutes, do runs, right? Um, so, so those are ideas um, of what you could do. Yeah, so, so one thing you could do is potentially save, right? So one thing, you know, Colleen, to answer your question of what you can do to bias is um, you can actually, uh, oops, I'm going to go back to draft. You can, you can export in, you know, a CSV or whatever, like this. Uh, you want to export this right here. And then you can re-import it um, back in your next run and then see what was first 30 minutes ago, right? So you would need to figure out a way to always get the last one. I don't think it'd be that hard. Question for the Parabola team. Um, so, and then re-import it, check what was first before, and then not run it. So that's an idea, I guess. Yeah, you can do it by location as well. You can do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Cool, cool, cool. Um, awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna close it down for today. Uh, thanks for joining. Hope to see you next week. And uh, uh, um, right there, you go. Use Google Sheets from the last run and read it next time. Yeah, exactly. You can. Yeah, you can finish a run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. I'm gonna go. It was good. Good seeing y'all. Thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, you know where to find me, Twitter, whatever. And uh, uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming.